Hey guys, good afternoon. Uh, appreciate you guys coming out to see us and covering us, making us present. Western New York, all across the nation, and everything that you guys do to uh, to uh, highlight our players and highlight our program. Um, you know, obviously, guys, we're disappointed with the result in the game uh, last week against Fordham. Um, the good good thing about our roster, guys, is we're not discouraged about the team that we have whatsoever. Um, We've had some great responses to how we practice on Monday and Tuesday, great one-on-one conversations, um, and we stay in the problem-solving and solution-based business. Um, we feel like we have the right people in our program to uh, identify the areas that we need to identify to improve and grow. Um, and although that we lost, uh, there's a ton of areas that we are extremely uh, proud that we feel, feel like we're playing at a high level in a number of areas. Uh, we just got to continue to raise the level of play all across the board. Um, you know, obviously, you ask yourself as a head coach, uh, you know, is your team ready to play? I think anytime you start a game off 21 to 3, um, it's pretty evident that your team is ready to go and ready to play. You know, so what are the lessons that we have to learn? What did we learn off the off the table? Uh, I guess more than anything, you know, anybody can beat anybody. We know that. We knew that going in, and maybe not necessarily learned a lesson, but something that's a always a great reminder for us Um, and then we have to continue to play all the way through to finish games and finish moments and 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 do what's necessary in the moment I feel like our prep leading up to the game was really good felt like we were in a great mental space Um, our night before game meetings were really some of the best we've had since I've been here Uh, the body language the eye contact the communication and go going all the way up to kick um, felt really confident that we were ready to go obviously um, in the moment in the game I know you look at the third downs that we were just not able to get off the field. Um, So we've identified those things, 11 of 19 on third down. We have been traditionally a very high third down defense team. You see that from last year. You'll you'll see that. We'll get ourselves right for this year as well. Um, But to force 19 third downs in the game will also tell you that we were playing pretty well on first and second. Um, You don't have traditionally that many third downs that show up in a college football game. Um, So we have to get off the field on third down. Um, We have to execute in the fourth quarter quarter. We've been outscored in the fourth quarter uh, the last two games against Wisconsin and Fordham. That's an area that we're talking about. And then overall, uh, just just uh, eliminating and limiting some of those big plays that occurred um, in, in, in the throw game last week. So we had guys in positions. We had guys in the right spot. we got to make some plays. And then we have to, by call and by scheme design, help guys in some situations by, at times, uh, for lack of better terms, maybe taking some stress or taking some relief, moving the stress from player to player, from position to position. So um, we haven't turned the ball over in two games games on offense, uh, something we're really proud of, our respect and the level of respect that we have for the ball. Uh, we feel like our quarterback, Cole Snyder, is playing at a really strong level. There's still areas of growth in his game, but he's, he's doing a really good job of being a great leader, playing with poise in the pocket and, uh, and taking care of the ball and respecting the ball the right way. Mike and Ron have been a great combination at running back. We're still, de- still developing the depth there. And I think overall, by design, uh, uh, special teams, we felt like, uh, you know, when you block a kick in a game, um, you block a punt and you also block a P18. You return it for two. Um, they return some balls on kickoff where we were downing them inside the 15. You can see the effort and the hustle on special teams, which was really alive and well. I think more or less uh, what's the big theme coming away? It's just execution. I think bottom line is just executing in the moment, solving some uh, some uh, some schematic um, issues or, or just things that we've identified that we just need to adjust and, uh, and continuing to keep uh, really a healthy mindset going into uh, really t- talented Liberty team that's coming into our place that is 2-0. They beat um, uh, Bowling Green, really really good win for them, and and then also New Mexico State, really good win for them, both at home. Uh, we faced uh, Coach uh, Coach Jamie Chadwell a couple times and uh, um, uh, have some familiarity with them coming here two years ago and then us going down there last year. Uh, both tight ball games the last two years and, um, you know, we had the ball in the lead last year in the fourth quarter. We drop a punt and uh, and they, they end up taking the lead there in the fourth quarter. So a lot of, a lot of history a lot of experience for us to learn and grow from really encouraged about our group I know uh, it's a disappointing loss but I'm really looking forward to our response this week and our response in the coming weeks moving forward throughout the season what do you take from uh, the play-
play calling against Fordham and Wisconsin. How do you prepare that to apply for Liberty? You know, we've had, I guess if you look at it from an ST standpoint, uh, we really have a, had an ability to apply our scheme to to uh, uh, our first two opponents, I think, in a really good way. I think we played really sound on ST um, uh, outside of, obviously, we had a, we had that one kick at the end there that we did not make. But I, I have straight, straight great trust, and I mean great trust in Alex and nothing but confidence in, in what he's done throughout uh, the course of his career and what he's going to do this year. Uh, but we've our kickoff unit's been played strong. Our return units have played strong. When you look at it from an offensive and defensive approach, we've really played kind of three different offenses from a defensive approach uh, the last three weeks. Um, you know, Fordham had, uh, uh, you know, w- really kind of going back to some of these kind of air raid offenses, a little bit wider splits, more vertical throw attack. Um, Wisconsin was a air raid spread that that really started on the ground more than it was in the air. And then you look at um, what Liberty presents in a little bit more of a triple option type offense. Uh, there's a real uh, dive quarterback pitch element to what they do. Um, from an offensive perspective, a similar concepts, not the same, but similar concepts, quarter shell teams and uh, how you want to attack some two highs, how you want to attack some, uh, some one high safety um, uh, looks that we're going to get. So uh, we've had a little bit different uh, um, uh, variations, I guess more probably from a defensive perspective from Wisconsin to Fordham to what we're going to see against Liberty. Um, uh, but this is, the, you know, the game plan for opponents doesn't start now. It doesn't start this week. It really started months ago. It starts in, in summer. It starts in the off season. Um, so uh, uh, we're able to kind of pick up uh, from where we left off game plan wise and, and then and then put and apply our scheme where we are with our guys. And you brought up a good point I, you're gonna face that spread slash triple option again. Did you foresee your program preparing for this offense again because James Cadwell took over Well that? you know that's that's the nature of college football. You know um, there's so many moving pieces involved. I don't know if you can plan really anything when it kind of comes to what you may or may not see just because of the nature of transient staffs and rosters and people and transfers. And um, the, I think the healthy thing, the positive for us, is that there's a lot of familiarity with what um, with what we've defended, at least in the past. They're not the exact same, um, uh, but they do a phenomenal job. You know, uh, and they, they've been extremely successful. Uh, if you look at our last two years defending that type of offense, uh, we've been able to put ourselves in a position we feel like put ourselves in a position to win the game in the fourth quarter um, and uh, and we got to talk about what's necessary in the moment to get those things done talking execution and follow through like how do you approach that as a staff like when you really only have a week between games obviously like you said you've been put yourself in the position so what do you focus on in practice to kind of accentuate right I think when you when you go through a post-game review train wreck I look here we, we go through really a systematic approach I start with myself first you know um, I ask myself there's about 20 questions that I ask and I go through and I present those questions to the team um, one of those things is our process leading up to the moment um, is there anything that we need to change or adjust is there anything I would do differently uh, is there anything that I liked or did not like where you really can have some real communication with your head coach evaluation to your team I think that transparency allows us to have great conversations with our guys. Um, Then from a schematic approach, uh, we meet with our coordinators three times a week. I do. I sit down with our our, our coach, Coach Wright and Coach Mangus as we game plan and special teams wise uh, with Coach Applewhite and uh, Coach Caputo in terms of how we game plan, game management, how we see a game going. Um, You know, we were, uh, if you look at us a year ago, there's not a team in a Mid-American Conference that went for it more on fourth down than we did. Um, We're, I think, seven times right now through two games, right around the average of what we're going to have, um, uh, how we look at ourselves, how we approach a game plan, because you're not planning one individual section. You're tying in complementary football and how one piece is going to affect another. If we think it's a game where we have to create a few more possessions and maybe fourth down is going to be a little bit more in play, well, then who, well, then, you know, defense needs to know that, that we may be on the field a little bit more and we can anticipate, um, you know, obviously we want to pick them up, but if you don't, what's going to happen there, you know, thereafter? Um, you know, what's the field goal line? You know, what's the punt line? You know, how are we punting with the win and against the win as a conversation when we play at home at times, you know, so there's a number of things that we look at. And I think when we keep it 
I think there's a science to it, and I think there's also a real art to it, where you where you're, you're still involving your your young men in your locker room in terms of like, hey, Cole Snyder and I sit down during the week. What do we like? What do we not like? So there's a checklist we go through. There's conversations, and then as we go through a week together, we mold and build a game plan. And then obviously, when the game occurs, then there's the in-game adjustments and how we call the game and what what adjustments need to be made. Um, and and that's kind of the flow and the sequence of of how we put things together. I touched on this earlier about the run game production. There was only 97 yards on the ground last week against Florida. Do you want to find more balance, like a little more? Maybe a little bit of a, 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 um, uh, deceptive number there we lost the yardages a little bit on the um, on the intentional groundings uh, that we had with 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 Cole Snyder uh, if you look at Ron and both Mike uh, they're averaging uh, really close to that five point yards to carry right now and we're getting them both involved in a really healthy way and then obviously they lost yardage plays kind of negates that total yardage number we're not at the number that we see ourselves being at yet uh, we're still developing and molding who we are and our identity um, again we grow through out of season. I think something I'm really proud of is, is I think as things flow and they grow, uh, you'll see things come alive in terms of how we get certain guys the ball, how our roster continues to develop, and uh, and then who we are from a schematic approach. I, I, I think we have our hands around it pretty good, um, but we are still developing that identity, um, and our guys understand that and know that, and, um, and that's exactly where we are. But I feel like we have the right people and the right pieces in place to be exactly where we need to be when the, everything settles and when the smoke kind of clears, so to speak. Marlon Johnson has had a couple of big games, kind of emerged as your number one receiver at the moment. He's had to be patient throughout his career. What kind of conversations have you had over your three years with Marlon to try to get him to the point where he is now? One, one of the guys I'm, I'm – I've had a lot of players that I've been really, really proud of, a lot of guys that I've, you know, been associated with. And, and you know, you look at – I think everything starts with vision – and what's, you know, what's your intent with guys and what's the approach in terms of, okay, on the field, what do you want to get done? Off the field, what do you want to see happen for guys in their own personal lives? I told the team during training camp that, you know, as much as we were proud of the progress that Marlon has made throughout his career, and this was before the season started, the thing that I think the fruit that we're maybe not going to see in front of a camera is what's going to happen with the next 20, 30 years of his life. His life is going to be a success, and I think he's got himself on track. He's taken great ownership and really made it personal to take ownership of his academic and athletic careers. And and I, he would probably be the first to tell you maybe three years ago that was not the case for him. And we're proud of what we've been able to do to help him. A semester and a half ago, he was at a low GPA. You look at him a semester and a half ago, now he had a 3.0 and up. Um, he's wearing number 41, which is a great honor in our program, not on accident, on purpose. What does he do to respond to that? Well, he has two touchdown receptions and 100 yards receiving. So I, I think none of this is a surprise. I'm very proud of him. But it's, I think it speaks to the coaches. I think Coach Kevin Sherman, our wide receiver coach, has done a phenomenal job. Coach Mangus is getting him in, involved in the game plan. I think there's trust with Cole Snyder and Marlon. And, 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 and you want to pour into young people and see them grow and develop. He certainly has had that happen for himself. We're certainly excited about what we think he's going to do for the rest of this year and see how good we can get with the time we have together. Uh, your team's what do you take from Florida and apply to preparing for the Sure. Um, I think any time when you look at down the field passing attack, if you look at us a year ago, we were one of the highest teams in the, in the nation in pass efficiency defense. Well, you're t how does that occur? Everybody kind of jumps over to one side or like, hey, your DBs or, you know, this guy. It's 11 on 11 football. There's 11 guys that have to all tie in in sequence for plays to occur the right way. At times, the coverage stress can go to a corner that maybe isn't in a one-on-one -on -one situation. At times, you can cloud a guy, and now you put some of that stress and split safety to a, up, to a guy up front, a, 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 a three technique or a shade, a guy inside that has to have a little bit more responsibility now that you have two safeties that are back deep. So we have to tie in our rush and coverage together. And when you do have the coverage stress corner and you are safety or nickel in that one-on-one -on -one situation, okay, you need to win. We got to win. Well, that's what we want you to do. 
we have to talk about how we need to get that done and then uh, and then take you through the technique, the technical process of what needs to happen on that play. Up front, when we do have two high safeties and we're protecting or playing a little bit more shell or softer coverage from a from a back to front approach, now where does that stress go? Maybe it goes to an inside guy. What's the responsibility now? Well, now you have a little bit more volume in terms of run game and gap responsibility. So I think by design, we have enough volume, schematic volume to – uh, do whatever we need to do in the moment. But when my number's called and I'm that guy maybe that has that stress on that down, we got to have guys that perform and execute. Our guys are up to task, and I, and I really believe we'll get those things done. Your secondary will have to deal without a starter being out for the first half because of the targeting. How do you handle that in practice week going up, and then how do you handle being able to put Devin back in sure. at the second half? I think by practice design, I did you know, first comment to Devin was one, let's go f- backward before we go forward. Teachable moment. What do we learn here? Um, you know, we, we, we talk targeting a lot in our building in terms of playing clean, safe football and keeping our head up and out of tackles. And, and unfortunately, we had that occur. Uh, so we have to learn from that first. And then second, uh, we, we can't wait to pro- play. We have to prepare to play. Right. So, you know, we can't have a mindset that, you know, well, my mind is mentally disengaged because maybe I'm not going in first. Prepare yourself no different as if you were taking snap one. And um, and when it's your time to go in and when we get to that moment where we can get you going, we'll get you going. Um, but it's certainly a teachable moment, not for one player, but for really every single person in our program uh, that, um, you know, th- these rules are in place and, and we got to adjust and make sure we're playing clean and good football so we don't do anything that decreases our chances of winning the game or hurt the team. Max Michelle and Don Felici did Maybe available this weekend? Yeah, they're going to be day to day right now. We uh, we feel uh, we're obviously we're going to make some game time decisions on where they are, but I think things are positive in terms of how we see them right now. Uh, uh, two guys that have played a lot of football for us, two guys we have a lot of great confidence in. Um, a little bit of precaution in making sure that they're safe and they're good, and then and then we'll see where they are later on in the week. Liberty's forced seven interceptions uh, first two weeks here. Advantage going in with the ball security you've had so far. We just have to continue. I think it's a great point, Train Rick. We have to continue just to respect the ball. We have to have a great amount of respect for what we do with the ball in our hands, uh, how we hold the ball, how we throw the ball, our, our center to quarterback exchange, our exchange from quarterback to running back, our exchange from quarterback to wide receiver. When the ball's in my hand, what do I do with the ball? So we just have to continue to highlight. I think if you look at us a year ago, we were one of the highest teams in the nation in turnover margin, takeaways and giveaways. We were top five in takeaways. We were top 15 overall in the overall turnover margin. Uh, we have to continue to have a high amount of respect for the ball. The ball will continue to tell us a great story about the trajectory of your overall win-loss throughout a season. Um, we preach and talk the ball every day. We draw the ball. Um, we know that the ball is going to be a big deciding factor in the outcome of this game coming up. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you.